choir practice after the service tonight. And then on Tuesday, no, Monday night, Monday night, men's prayer time and basketball, 7 o'clock, open the Family Life Center. Tuesday morning, Bible study with Brother Connie in the Discovery Building. That will be at 10 a.m. Wednesday, Discovery Club and Youth Zone at 6.15. Midweek prayer service at 7 o'clock. On Friday the 12th, the adopted group will have an activity. On Saturday, the 50 plus is sponsoring a potluck supper and uh, board games. And uh, Brother Biz asked me to ask you if you have a board game you like, bring it along. So they'll have plenty of games and that is opened up for all ages now. So uh, there is a sign up sheet so they'll know how many to prepare for. But that will be uh, Saturday, March the 13th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, some things that are coming up, Ladies Retreat, March 26th and 27th, and the deposit of $15 is due this coming Sunday. And do sign up for that on the board also. Uh, some other things in the future, the Fitly Framed Mentorship Activity on the 14th, Soldiers of the Cross Youth Rally on the 19th, Men's Prayer Breakfast on the 20th, I mentioned the Ladies Conference, and then Easter, Easter, April the 4th. And then April the 9th and 10th, Men's Advance in Tampa. So a lot of activities, but uh, one activity you'll need to do Saturday night is change your clocks. Spring forward, set them one hour forward. This is the time change where you lose that hour of sleep. So get to bed an hour earlier, because what was 10 o'clock, you will spring forward and it will now be 11 o'clock. So if you normally come for Sunday school and you fail to spring forward, when you come in, you'll be here at church time. So this is the bad time change. <laughs> you lose the hour of sleep and someone, someone as I'm looking out on this great auditorium, someone will come in thinking it's Sunday school time and it will be church time. Change your box. Spring forward Saturday night. A good uh, missionary letter. I hope you've had a chance to read that. Uh, take your song, book, turn to page number 235. You may, may remain seated as we sing, He Set Me Free. 235.
be with the offering now, bless it, and we pray for our pastor who will speak in just a few moments. Father, bless him and use him tonight, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. <laughs>
good, Sister Nancy. Amen. Good to see you folks here. We're going to be in the book of Genesis this evening. Genesis chapter 44. Well, we're running upon the end of Genesis real quick. Good to see you folks here this evening. Nice to have a little chill in the air. But not too much. Just a little bit. It's enough to keep Brother Harry home. Brother Harry said it's too cold. I have to hibernate. So y'all pray for Brother Harry. He doesn't like cold weather. He's going to preach for us next month. So hopefully by that time of April, there will be no chill at all in the air. So he's going to sing us a song too. I'm looking forward to that. We are. Uh, don't forget all the events that's uh, throughout the uh, month. March is uh, looking pretty full. Do what you can and be faithful where you can. Again, uh, thankful for the group that came out yesterday and was able to go out and uh, visit, uh, share the gospel with people. What a blessing that was. Genesis 44, verse 1. <clears throat> the brothers are still in Egypt. All 12 of them. Uh, the events of last chapter finished out with them having great fellowship. Joseph sitting them around the table by age and then uh, giving Benjamin five times as much as any of the others. And yet they were still married. What a blessing that was. Uh, I guess that this thought here before I read, probably one of the things that really caught my attention about chapter 44 was the acronym JOY. I've told you time and time again about Jesus, others, and yourself. This one character, one brother, Judah. When we get through here, you're going to see a changed person. I mean, a couple of chapters back, he was really messed up, wasn't he? I mean, really messed up. He, he got his daughter-in-law pregnant and uh, been uh, caught in that uh, fiasco. And But we're going to see in this here chapter at the end what God can really do with a person's life uh, as He works through them and in them. So uh, this is one of them that uh, joy really sticks out to me. Uh, Judah began to think about Jesus things of God, and then others, and then himself, uh, and uh, we'll see that as we go through this chapter tonight. In verse 1 it says, and he commanded the steward of, the, uh, of his house, saying, fill the men's sacks with food, as many as they can carry, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. Let me pause here for a minute. You think after the last trip... Before they left up out of there, they had opened up their sack of the, and looked into the bag. I think this is a, just a, a quick side note that uh, about this is we better make sure what's in our sack. Be very and we better make sure like in Hosea, Hosea says they had sacks with holes. Uh, another thing about them sacks, so uh, you check your sack out. Uh, ladies, and purses you carry around, make sure uh, there's godly things inside them and things that only belong to you. Men, in your wallet, make sure there's godly things in there and things that belong only to you. Uh, so here he goes again. Joseph's done got another scheme, and he's got the, his uh, steward putting uh, the monies back in the sack. Let's go back and read it again by halfway through. And there stood no man, uh, no one too far there. I went up and put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest and his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. Verse 3, as soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away. They and their asses, and when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, oh, follow after the men. And when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, 
Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing. And he overtook them, and spake unto them these same words. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? God forbid that they, uh, thy servant should do according to these things. Verse 8. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks and mouths, we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondsmen. And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words, He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack unto the ground, and opened every man his sack. And he searched and began at the eldest, and left at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes and laid at every man his ass and returned to his city. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. Verse 15. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Wot ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak, or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so, but the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O oh, my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ear. And let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. He, uh, my Lord uh, asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? Verse 20. And he said unto my Lord, And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one. And his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if we should leave his if he should leave his father, his father would die. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. And it came to pass, when we came up unto thy servant, my father, we told him thy words by, uh, uh, of my Lord. And our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down if our youngest brother be with us. Uh, younger brother be with us. Then will we go down. For we may not see the man's face except our youngest brother be with us. Verse 27. And thy servant, my father, said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw him not since. And if ye take all, uh, this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Verse 30. Now therefore, when I come to thy, uh, to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life. It shall come to pass when he seeth thee, uh, seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servants shall uh, bring down the gray hairs of thy servant's father with sorrow to the grave. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore I pray thee, let the servant abide instead of the, uh, of the lad, 
a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. For now, uh, for how shall I go up to the, uh, my father and the lad not be with me, lest for adventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. The brothers are sent homeward, verses 1 through 3. And we notice there that in verse 1 through 3, uh, as we read, that Joseph provides uh, for them with great bounty. Uh, I mean, their sacks are full. They came for a little bit of food, but their sacks are full. Uh, and he comes up with this here uh, scheme uh, to have his uh, steward go and to overtake them and to find out which one, which he already knew, but uh, find the, the, the cup that was in the, the, the thing there. And you'll notice that there was a pledge made uh, before said, uh, whoever has the cup, whatever cup, whoever has this cup, because we don't have it, we're sure of this. We're not, we're, we're, we haven't done anything. We were honest, we brought back money. Uh, we are positive there's not, uh, no money in it. Then they took down the sacks real quick uh, there and he started from the oldest to the youngest and got all the way down. To me, you think uh, Benjamin would have kind of peaked a little bit. I mean, they, uh, you know, Levi would have peaked a little bit. They would have saw something was strange, but they waited one by one. Uh, and sure enough, there it was found in Benjamin's cup. Now the pledge was, kill it and we'll be your servants. Uh, you know, I, I think oftentimes about uh, the payment of the corn. Uh, as uh, they brought money to buy corn, of course, this was God's plan, and God's plan was to uh, uh, to preserve the nation of Israel. Uh, and uh, as God does things, uh, the payment, like our payment, is always paid by God. Uh, you know, the salvation, for my salvation, I couldn't pay for it. Uh, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. God paid uh, there for the wages of sin is death. It's what I owe. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, you know, and I, I couldn't pay for it. You couldn't pay for it. And, and this here is a, a, a picture of when God's plan is in order, uh, that there is no payment for that plan. Uh, you know, and Joseph kept uh, giving the money back, giving the money back. Of course, Joseph was using it to reel them in. And every time they got a little bit closer uh, to confessing, this great sin that they were trapped up in. Matter of fact, here at the end, uh, in, in this portion, uh, as he's telling the story, uh, there Judah begins to speak, and he says, uh, God uh, has, uh, in verse 16, God has found out our iniquity. God knew. Be not see, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, everything that we have done is open to God. Nothing's hid from God. So, but, but God's got to get us many times where we see that we're found out. Many times we think we've tricked the whole world. I mean, 20 years has passed right now. Many times we think that, uh, you know, we've got this scheme down and, and we're okay. Even this, our, our father, even in Judah telling the story, our father believes that his uh, son has been torn. He believes he's dead. Uh, you know, you told us that we had to go bring the youngest. We told you our father had two sons by this uh, woman. And, and that's another thing that really caught my attention there was, what did Rachel leave Laban's house with? What if I hid something, right? I think Joseph maybe found out this scheme from his mom. Let's just put something in the bags there. Let's hide it. I don't be careful what you do because little eyes are on us. They're watching us there. Uh, you know, but uh, this year, Joseph just kept giving back the funds and giving back the money there. Uh, but this time he put that old cup into uh, Joseph's, uh, into Benjamin's uh, sack. And there it was. The brothers in verses 7 and 8, they were sure they had not done wrong. Isn't that amazing? How you can stand sure when you know in the back of your mind. Every time uh, this here situation came through and God began to work, that old guilty conscience coming. Right now, you see what you tell yourself? Before long, you start believing a lie. Ah, we're honest. There, there is nothing in our sacks. Uh, you know, be very careful that you check yourself out. 
if you've tricked yourself and you've you done fooled yourself, uh, you know, through life, and, and, and you know, make sure you're right. Don't, don't allow your mind to trick you. Allow God to examine. Allow God to look into our sacks. Each one of us got a sack that we carry around. It's got some things in it. If we're not careful, uh, this, we need to not believe within our own mind and heart that, uh, because we left early that everything's good. Hey, when we're approached by the Holy Spirit of God, you know, we need to say, God, look in. Here I am. Search me. Know my heart. Lord, if there be any evil way, don't try to make some, uh, some kind of uh, uh, deal either. Don't say, well, if I'm guilty, God, kill me. God, if, if I be guilty, if you find it in me, kill, 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 kill him. Don't be making no deals. Don't, don't do that. But don't you like the mercy of Joseph? Joseph didn't hold up that end of the bargain. Many, many times we make some foolish deals with God. God, get me out of this and I'll do that. As soon as God gets us, you know, lined out, straightened up, we get down the road, you know, a little bit ways, we forget all about it, don't we? We, we become like the butler, don't we? You remember the old butler? Hey, don't, don't forget me when you get up there. We forget our deal with God. Well, I'm so thankful that the mercies of God are renewed in David. That his compassions are great. I, I'm so thankful that uh, as I've walked with God through these years and, and, and the mistakes that I've made and I, I've confessed uh, that, that He's uh, loved me, yet still the same. That, that my doing right doesn't increase His love and my doing wrong doesn't decrease His love. That He loves me unconditionally as God. Amen. What an amazing thing. Boy, Joseph could have took this here to heart. He could have really did. He, he could have uh, ran this down to the end. But Joseph ignored the whole situation about taking Benjamin's life. Joseph had no desire to do that. And I'm going to tell you, God didn't have any desire for any of us to perish. He's not willing that any should perish. Have you heard it? You've heard it said before. Uh, how can a loving God send anybody to hell? God hasn't. God provided a way. All anybody has to do is accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. He's not willing that any should perish. Joseph's not willing that any should perish in this situation. Joseph's working this out so that these uh, brothers of his could see their fault and get their lives right. And that's all God desires from us. God wants to work in a way in our life that He brings circumstances into our life uh, that allows us to stay right with Him. God wants to hear your prayer. God wants to reach out and help you. The Bible doesn't say God, uh, His ears just stopped up for no reason at all, and His hand short for no reason at all. The Bible says His ears stopped up and His hand is shortened uh, because of our sin and our iniquity. God wants to. God desires fellowship. I think about when the, the resurrection happened and, and Jesus come up out of that tomb, uh, you know, and, and, and went walking down that old road uh, to Damaus and, uh, there in fellowship with those two disciples. He wanted to talk with them. He wanted to spend time with them. Uh, I think about the, the Garden of Eden and the, and the great creation and uh, how God came down and spoke things into existence and then on the seventh day rested. Uh, and, and then sometime after that, there it was, back in the garden again. What do you think that was? Calling out and, and searching for Adam because God desires fellowship with you and I. Joseph desired for them to know that, hey, I am your brother. Do you remember last week he went and wept? I mean, he went off into a room and he, he broke down and wept because he desired such fellowship. He didn't want the sentence of death that they threw out there. Found it there in Benjamin's, that, that, that cup there. And, uh, boy, then all of a sudden the grieving began to, to, to start, didn't it? As soon as it was there. Look in verse 12. And he searched and began at the eldest, left the youngest, 
And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Can you imagine? <gasps> Ooh, can you imagine the breath that went out of their lungs? Can you imagine Judah? What did Judah had already pledged to his father? You remember? Judah pledged his two sons. What? Can you imagine? He, I, I believe they honestly thought that they were clear of this matter right here. But can you imagine when the sack was over? And there was that cup. Can you imagine Judah thinking about the days he had uh, rocked his boys on his knees? Had took them down fishing. Had taught them how to skin a goat. I, can you imagine the first time that he took them down in, uh, to the altar and, and all this was flashing back? What in the world? And, and the breath uh, just went out. The strength, I bet his mouth was, uh, was dry. Look at verse 13. The Bible says, Then they rent their clothes and laid it every man his ass and returned to the city. And Judah, his brother, came to Joseph, uh, Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and fell before him on the ground. Remember I told you, Jesus, others, yourself, we're seeing a man that's been changed. We're seeing here a man that went totally against God's law. I mean, totally against God's law in, in the, the way uh, of procreation and, and, and the way God wanted to preserve the name of each, uh, each person in the tribe of Israel. Uh, when his eldest son passed away and uh, then the, the middle son uh, spilt his seed and then the, the third son, he took him, withheld him from him. And then, uh, you know, this was a man that went way down into sin. This was a man that did some wicked things. Thought he found him a harlot that was just so sorry and so, so far removed from the things God he didn't realize was his daughter-in-law. Oh, what a mess. You don't see it here, do you? Yeah, the Bible says he hurried up. They laid it their ass. Up. They, they got everything gathered back up. They put them sacks back together speedy. And boy, I'll tell you, you talk about some donkeys getting up and going. You want to get back to Joseph's house. Well, I wonder why we're so slow to get back to our Father. When we've been called. Benjamin's called. Judas running back there to intercede on behalf of Benjamin, on behalf of his father who he's deceived all these years. He, he's running back there, falling down, thinking about his two boys that he's done pledged to his father. You think about it now, he's done pledged to his father, now his father's got to make a decision. Well, I'm going to kill my two grandsons. What a mess, what a deal. I mean, what a deal is, I mean, that is craziness. You see, when you get away from God, the kind of reasoning we have, you get like a lot. Hey, leave the mangers alone. Here, take my two daughters who's known no man. Oh, we, we just reason crazily when we're out there and seeing. I mean, what the Bible says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't lean on God one day and the next day lean into this old world, dear friend. Oh, oh, when those sack was found, well, they laid their ass and they got themselves down there to Joseph's house. And, and listen, son, he fell on the ground. It was the last time we fell on, on the old altar of God. So God, forgive me. God, forgive my brother. Forgive my sister. God, forgive my, my mother. Give, forgive my father. Forgive my grandfather, my great-grandfather. Forgive, forgive our church. Lord, Lord, forgive our pastor today. He is a, a, a little bit rough today. Huh? Instead of going home and talking about it and running it all around, Lord, forgive me. He, he just, he needs help, Lord. I know he's your man. But God, you gotta, you got to get, get his temper under control. <laughs> When they rushed, they rushed to, to Joseph, fell down there uh, to his face, and, uh, and uh, as they uh, fell there, he began to beg and, and beseech and, and began to look to Joseph uh, different looks. We have one far greater than Joseph. You know what they said? You are as Pharaoh. 
You know what? You are God of God and King of kings and Lord of lords. We have one greater than the King of Egypt. You should fall to that. Oh, he pleads on behalf of his father. Uh, you know, if you went back and you studied Judah, Judah in chapter 37, uh, 38, especially. Matter of fact, let's turn over there, chapter 37. Look, look here real quick. Chapter 37. You talk about a different person. Preacher, why is this written? The New Testament says it's written so it's, it's for our learning. Chapter 37, verse 25. Look what it says here, chapter 37, verse 25. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of the Israelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spices and balm and myrrh and going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brother was, uh, his brother were content. Let's just sell it. Let's just get us some money. Now he's begging for, for his brother. The, the one brother he was willing to sell off into, uh, you know, despair. Uh, but now he's begging. He's pleading. He's looking around, uh, realizing Hey, we're guilty. Hey, hey, we're hopeless here. Hey, we're undone. You're his Pharaoh. And he looked to, uh, he, he looked to Joseph for help. Not his own might, his own power. You know, Ju Judah is what, uh, what is he of Israel? Judah is the what? Lion, huh? Lion. He ain't looking look much like no lion right now, is he? Hey, dear friend, hey, we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, but there's those times, dear friend, that we need to just be humble and realize we're weak in the flesh. That we're hopeless, we're undone. Like, like, like Judah's realizing right now, and he begins to plead on behalf of his father uh, in verse 20 uh, through 31. Uh, boy, what a, what, what, this is, to me, very tender. This is a very tender moment. A man that you have deceived for 20 years. Now you're pleading on his behalf. They don't give up on people. God can do some great things down the road. God can do some things that, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, his, his dad's not even here to see. There might be some, something going on right now that you're not even able to see God's working on. God's mending. God's, God's working. God, God, God's twisting here and twisting there and, and getting their attention. Then he, verses 32 through 34, begins to plead on behalf of Benjamin. He has to talk to him about Benjamin. Hey, let's, let's, just, let's just take a moment here, sir. Hey, look, I, I know what we said, and, and, and I know that we've done uh, something not right here, but let's just pause just for a minute. Let's think about what's going on. If we do this thing, what you're talking about, it's going to kill my father. It's going to take his life. What, what, I'm, I'm bondman. Is that what he's not saying? He said there in verse 33. Now therefore I pray, let thy servant abide instead of the land. He's willing to stay. What did Paul say? What did God, that the, my brethren Israel was say? He said, God, I, I would be accursed if only my kinsmen. When's the last time you had a prayer like that? God, that, 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 that the, the people of Orange County and Osceola County, Lord, I, I would be willing if it was at all possible to give up my own salvation, that they wouldn't have to go to hell. That's a tough prayer to friend. We know it's not possible. Paul understood it wasn't possible. Paul was a man that believed in eternal salvation. But that's how he that, that's where he was at, that he was at a point where he was willing, if at all possible that somebody would get saved, he would be willing to, to, to give it up. Well, that's, that, that's getting to a point where, where you're caring more about others than yourself. You remember the prayer Paul prayed in Philippians. He said, Lord, to go with you, I won't desire, but to stay is much more needful. I'm between, I'm, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I'm, I, I'm twitched two, two places, Lord. Uh, you know, uh, I, I really want to be with you, but it's better I stay here. 
I really want to go home to heaven, dear friend. I, I really, honestly, uh, tonight, dear friend, if God would call me home, what a blessed place to be. But I know there's three people I know right now uh, that God has given me opportunity to speak with this very month about their soul that aren't saved. It's much better I stay. But as much, Brother Jim, as I want to see the face of God face to face. I don't want to see those folks in hell. I want, to have a, I want to have a heart for others. And the only way to have a heart for others, dear friends, it's got to be Jesus first. It's got to be Jesus first. Boy, He pleads on behalf of them. What a beautiful story. As we think about Judah, here as his heart's been changed. 20 years ago, sold his brother. 10 years ago, he's having a child by his daughter-in-law. Now he's begging on behalf for others. We're talking about from being selfish to giving. What a change. So no matter where you've been. I don't think anybody in here is at this position that Judah found himself in. But I'll tell you this. There's no sin too great that our God cannot forgive. There's no sinner so far gone that our God cannot change and use once again. Oh, Judah. What a tender story here. What a story that should help us as people. I mean, to know. Uh, some of us can think back. Not too yet, too, too long ago, how wicked we were. And what God's done. Just think about what He can do in another five years in your life. He's the Father. And He keeps a working. He keeps a working. Oh, what a tender story. As he begins to think about the welfare of others. You know, uh, if I can encourage you with anything in this chapter, I, I would encourage you once again to go back and study the life of Judah in whole. Getting back there uh, to the birth, uh, all, all the way through uh, to, the, uh, to the blessings. You remember up at, uh, at the men's retreat. One of the messages was about the blessings that uh, Israel gave to, the, to the, each tribe, to each person. I mean, just study the whole life of Judah and, and see how God uh, works that thing out. And see how things come out. And I do believe at the end of this whole thing, Brother James, the Messiah comes out of the lineage of Judah. And in the lineage of Judah, four women... Oh, can you imagine God in all of His infinite wisdom as He looked down through time as He began to lay this thing out and begin to work out? He said, I'm going to blow some of them Pharisees' minds up. Rahab the harlot. Ruth the Moabitess. Bathsheba the wife of, what's his name? Uriah. What's the other one? Who? Tamar. Tamar. I mean, this is amazing. Study the life of Judah. If you think God can't change you and get you right and get you in the line and use you down the road, dear friend, study Judah. God can use you. He wants to use you. He really does. Father, thank you, Lord, for this here night. Thank you for the studies through the book of Genesis and the life of Judah. Lord, I imagine there were many of us turning our nose up at old Judah here over the last uh, five, seven, eight chapters, Lord, as we look back from chapter 37 and then when he did what he did with his daughter-in-law, Lord, I know we were stung, our, our stomachs was churning. God, may we see your grace tonight. May we see how good a God you really are and how you desire to use people. And that there's no sin too great that the blood of Christ can't clean us. Lord, help us to to, to yield ourselves in the midst of our sin and Lord allow you to work in our lives. God, my desire is not that I'd be somebody great, but I'd be a trophy of grace that you've created. God, work in me. I certainly need you. Thank you for our church and church family. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, you dismissed. Choir, don't forget to come right on up.